quite a while back. Roughly 15 million years ago in a warm waterfront ocean covering what is currently southern Maryland, the sea surface out of nowhere ejected in a fierce commotion as a shark the size of a five-story building, the powerful and gigantic megalodon, Otitus megalodon, sent off itself at a whale close to the surface, bracing its 250 serrated teeth around the whale's midriff. As the striving pair broke the surface in a horrendous break, the power of the assault bowed the whale's back and caused a brutal pressure crack. That is the situation proposed by researchers who as of late inspected two of the whale's broken vertebrae and one megalodon tooth, which was seen near one another in Maryland's Calvert Bluffs, a site dating to the Miocene age, 23 million to 5.3 a long time back. The scientists portrayed the whale's wounds, and what could have caused them, in another review distributed web based on August 25th in the diary Paleontologia Electronica. We just have fortuitous proof, however, it's cursing conditional proof, said Stephen J. Godfrey, a keeper of fossil science at the Calvert Marine Gallery in Maryland and lead creator of the review. This is how we see the story unfurling, Godfrey told Live Science. Even though there are limits to what we can guarantee, and we believe the proof should justify itself. The sparse remaining parts of what was probable a 13-foot, 4 meters, whale, dating to around a long time back, were at first found by Mike Elwood, a Calvert Marine Gallery volunteer and fossil gatherer. It was unrealistic to decide whether the example was a toothed whale, a baleen whale or even a huge dolphin, yet Godfrey was immediately captivated regardless. As far as the fossils we've seen on Calvert precipices, this sort of injury is uncommon, he said. The injury was so dreadful, so the consequence of serious injury, that I needed to know the origin story. Godfrey thought that he could learn more by peering inside the harmed vertebrae with CT checks, and a nearby clinic proposed to assist with evaluating the fossil with present-day clinical imaging procedures. The sweeps showed a coarse book pressure crack, a kind of break where vertebrae disintegrate and fall that was so particular in its example as to be immediately conspicuous. The researchers likewise found that the film encompassing the bone, known as the periosteum, had created new bone after the injury. Whether or not the periosteal bone is shaped to fix the injury, as it frequently does in people or is the consequence of contamination or joint pain, the development of new bone post-injury proposes that the whale lived for quite some time in the wake of encountering the crack. Yet, as convincing as the megalodon speculation might be, different elements might have broken the whale's vertebrae a long period back. Wiped out marine megafauna other than a megalodon dash, for example, its direct relation Otitus chubutensis, the bogus mako shark, Brototus bainadetti, the Miocene white shark, Crocarodon hastilis, or even a macroraptorial sperm whale, Physiotorotia, might have conveyed correspondingly rebuffing blows. It's even conceivable that the whale ingested harmful green growth and overwhelmingly writhed until the creature crushed its spirit, the review writers proposed. Be that as it may, Godfrey thinks a megalodon assault is the most conceivable clarification. For a certain something, there's the sheer extent of the injury, one vertebra extended internal from the power of the other vertebra crushing into it. It's only so beyond preposterous with regards to the brutality, Godfrey said adding that it's difficult to envision any seizure or spasm pressing such a punch. And afterwards, there's the megalodon tooth, tracked down close by the vertebrae. A nearer assessment of the tooth uncovered that its tip pour off during the Miocene, reasonable in the wake of striking something like bone. And keeping in mind that it is conceivable that a Miocene megalodon may have essentially shed its old tooth while swimming over a long dead whale body or lost it while hunting a harmed whale and benefiting from its remaining parts, it is enticing to recreate a scene where the dominant hunter of the day dulled and at last lost its tooth while managing the pressure crack itself. We don't have the foggiest idea about the full collection of ruthless strategies that Megalodon might have utilized, however, it's conceivable that, such as living sharks, they trapped their prey from beneath, Godfrey said. During a high-energy break with prey between its jaws, he made sense of, 
The megalodon might have effectively flexed the whale's spine against gravity with enough power to make the noticed wounds. Be that as it may, Godfrey isn't precluding elective clarifications. Our paper covers the broadness and extent of the circumstances that might have caused this sort of harm, and ideally that will prod further exploration, he said. These are astounding stories. We get to recount the underlying story, however, whether that ends up being the best clarification is not yet clear. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments section. And if you enjoy our content, and never want to miss a video, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.